Welcome ladies and gentlemen. My subject is about herbs, roots, and magical spells. For those of you who do not believe in such practice, seeing is believing. But I would like to inform you that I will be exercising my right of the First Amendment of the Constitution of the United States of America. And bear that in mind that you also have that right. Why I like to speak about herbs? Because herbs have so much medicinal purpose in them and magical power that one should speak about these herbs. They are from nature, and within themselves, they have magical powers. How do we know they have healing power? Because men become sick and men start to use the herbs and they was better from their sickness. So therefore, herbs is good to use. As you can see, I have many variety of herbs here. I have all type of herbs. I have mint, basil, worm medicines, all types. Lavengers, I will get to that in a minute. Woo, it's feeling good. But I like to speak about the Bible for a few minutes because the Bible is so symbolic that most black men of the Western world base their mind on the book they call the Bible. So they lost their sense of direction. They don't know how to cope. Because the only thing they know is the Bible. Now we need to get out of that. Because the Bible speaks of how to build altars. You see, building an altar. If you go to Numbers chapter 23rd, it tells you how, how many rams and how many goats you need for the sacrifice. If you go to Numbers chapter 28, it tells you how many lambs or how they should be, and they should not have no blemish. You know what is blem blemish? Like sores, like the skin is coming away from the body. That the hairs are being loose off the, the, the body. They should have both horns. They should have their testicle, their balls, their private part. No blemish whatsoever. And they must be, they must be virgin. Elam, they, in those days they don't say virgin. Elam or he goat or he ox. Ox mean cows. So you should use those for sacrifice. Now, see the book you call the Bible need sacrifice because the God of the Bible require blood or smoke from the blood. So you burn the blood and it becomes a smoke. That is the God of the Bible. Now, black men and black women of the Western world, are you so blind to know there is no God of the Bible need blood for sacrifice? Or you need the flesh of a human for sacrifice? Or the flesh of any beast or fish of the ocean? In time gone, men do their writing and their saying and scroll. And parchment paper, their manuscript. And they did not speak of any God because you know who speak of God? The only man in the book is Moses. Before Moses, they did not use the G-O-D. Come on, black man and black woman. Where is, the, where is your preacher? How comes the preacher is not telling you all of this here? 
There were people before Moses was born. There was millions of people. Remember that Moses, they find Moses. And they took him to a magician house. Wake up, black man. Because the books speak of magic and sacrifice, witchcraft, burning the dead men bound, catching fish and burning the gall and the liver to drive away demons. Now, how come the preacher is not telling you that? If you go to the book of Tobias, chapter 7, it tells you that young Tobias was on his way to a woman's house because the woman killed all of her husband. She killed six husbands on the way to the woman's house. The guy have to walk, young Tobias have to walk at the river. You know, little trot is at the river. So you'd walk along the edge of the river. And the fish came out of the water. And then the spirit told him, catch a fish, man. Take out the gall. Take out the liver. And you take the food, the flesh for food on your way. <clears throat> Excuse me. And when you go to the woman's house, don't sleep with that woman because she killed all her husband. So the first night, take the liver, cut a little piece of it, and put it on the charcoal and let it burn. So it will drive away the spirit from the woman because she possessed with demons. Tobias chapter 7 is telling you that. That's magic. Hey, when you go home, take the gall. You know, in the gall, there's a sap into gall. And the sap in the gall is bitter. The sap is in the human gall is the same. It's bitter. These herbs that I have here, see these herbs? The sap that is in your gallbladder is the same as into these herbs. And the spirit told the guy, when you go home, take the sap and squeeze some into your father's eye so he can remove the scale from the father's eye because his father was blind. Now, is that magic or is it voodoo? Which one you think it is, black people? This book is telling you that. And your preachers are not reading that part of the book. None of your preachers. Because the black men of time gone was magician. All the men into the book here is magician. And I will prove it to you, believe it or not. They're already dead and gone, so we don't really need to base your mind upon all these dead men because they didn't do anything of, great, of greatness. They were wife swappers. They were baby killers. They were magicians seeking to take each other power away. There was animal killers. They was going with their daughters, having sex and bring forth children. So what is good about it? This is just a history for you to read because the black, white men have changed it. <coughs> they change it, but they did not change everything. Now, what is so holy about it? A man that you call Jesus? Who is the man you call Jesus? Is he a black man? Or is he just a white man? 
Which one you think it is? A white man or a black man? Answer me that question. Because I know the original man is not a white man. And his name is Emmanuel. And he's from the line of David. What do you mean he's from the line of David? He's from the line of David. Matthew chapter. First. Go to Matthew chapter first. The book of Matthew. And it will tell you. The generation of the man you call Jesus. His name is Emmanuel. You know, Abraham have David. And David have Solomon. And coming all the way down the line, Solomon have Jacob. Coming all the way down the line, Jacob have Joseph. It's a line of Jacob of Joseph. Solomon line all the way down have Jacob. And Jacob have Joseph. So, if he's from the line of David, he have a genealogy. That means the men have flesh, blood, as a man. Don't let anyone fool you. The men came from a family with magical power. Or spiritual power, if you want to put it that way. The men can take the dust and sprinkle it, and bird come and fly all over the place. You could raise the dead. He was not the only one who could raise the dead. Where did he get his power from? As your same book tell you, when he was a young boy, he always goes up into Jerusalem. Where all the whole Israelite always sit and make conversation of magical power. On the Egyptians, they always gather in Jerusalem because that was the place that they sit and, and, do, and do their talking. Especially on, like on the day the moon change, which is Saturday. You call it Saturday. The day the moon change. That's when they would gather and sit and talk about spiritual power. As a young boy, he liked to go there. That's why his parents think he was a bad little boy. So he gained all those spiritual knowledge. So that's why the book tell you of itself, do not make no image or worship any image. See? Because they will come alive. And Emmanuel learned that when he was a young boy. And he was not the only one. Pharaoh could make things come alive. Moses could make things come alive. Heron could make things come alive. Peter could make things come alive. Those men that into the book that I'm talking about related to. They could make things come alive. Now, is it magic? I read some spiritual power from a far away yonder land. Remember, in those times gone, they didn't have all these great universities that we have now. But they have so much scroll with all the history and all those scroll from their great great grandfather. Scroll of the dead, scroll of the beast, scroll of the fish. And when the Babylonian government went into Africa, they burned them all up. Because they think the black people was bad. Because I was worshipping demons or whatever. So wake up, black man. 
wake up. Let me give you one spell from, from all these herbs that I have here. I have a lot of herbs, so let me give you one from this. I'm going to take the lavender. See, I have a lavender here. It's called Spanish lavender. And this lavender is good for demons. You know what is demons? Demons occupy your house or, or occupy your body, your physical body. And you can't sleep at night because demons take over your home. You need to take these herbs and dry the herbs. If you can burn it green, it's much better. So you'll have some charcoal. See? Have some charcoal and you take the green herbs and put it on the lit charcoal. And the aroma from the charcoal will drive the demons out of your home. And let your home stay fresh. And you also can make tea with the lavender. Huh. You can make tea with the lavender. Do you know what the tea do? The tea of the lavender would make your mind merry. You know, merry means happy. Not merry, because I said that the last time, and somebody write me a letter. They could not understand. It's make your mind happy. So you have no sadness in your mind. Only the Spanish lavender. Do not use the French lavender or the English lavender. That's what we burn into our home as young boys in my father's home. If you do not have the knowledge of using herbs, it's best to seek more information on how to use these herbs. Because I speak about how to use herbs. I am not telling you how to use any herbs whatsoever. So make sure you have the knowledge on how to use herbs. But this one you can burn on the charcoal. And it will drive the demons out of the home. And it's also good for love. Huh. Love. You know love? which you call love. You want somebody to be with you. You want him to be ha happy with your physical body or happy with your spiritual mind. You need to put the, see the seeds here. The lavender sends seeds. Let's see if you can get a close up here. See the seeds here? I have to fix this camera. I'm doing everything by myself. So I'm kind of out of focus. But you see the seeds here? You take the seeds and you put it in the pillar. You put it in your pillar, and it will soothe the mind. Soothe means calm your mind. So you would have a good rest. You sleep well. When you wake in the morning, you would not be tired. So I use this, so when I wake in the morning, I would not be tired. That is one of the spells that I give you from this program. So let's put this aside over here. As I said before, in every program, I am going to teach my black brothers and black sisters how to use herbs. Because all these grandfathers are not teaching how to use herbs. No. Why they are not teaching you? Most of them already die and gone, just like my great-grandfather. And he put it down to my mother. And my mother put it down to me and my father. No, I have to put it down to my children. Because they could not read and write in those days. I say days again, I usually say time. They could not write in those times. Because they were not allowed to read and write. Can you get it? Good. So they keep it in their brains. So the best place to keep things is in the brains. Or into the mind. So no one will take it away from you. 
but you must teach it unto someone else that is very close to you. So this way they can teach it to their children. So why the black men of the Western world is not teaching this to their children? Especially the preachers. All they're doing is reading this book and getting your mind confused on all the people in this book is dead. They all die and gone. For a thousand and thousand of years, these guys have been dead and the preacher of today are talking about these guys. They did not do anything that great here. Because if you sit and read what the white men translate from the manuscript and washed out all his translation, you will understand this guy. This guy was barbaric, man. They was having sex with animals, with their daughter, was killing baby. They was cutting babies out of the mother womb before the baby was born. They were offering sacrifice to the gods because the gods need blood. Hey, if I'm a god and I can create all things, see, if I can create all things from nothing, nothing I create things from, I don't need no sacrifice. No matter how the things that I create becomes bad. Because I guess it's the only thing that do bad upon the face of the earth is man. Men do everything that is bad. The beast doesn't do anything that is bad, neither the birds or the fish. So only men do things bad. So why all these rest of things got to be punished because of man? You get it? Uh-uh. That's a story made up. Story made up for you to subdue your mind and confuse you and you become afraid and timid. The only man does, that does not have land upon this earth is the black man. You have no land, you have no food. You have no language. What language do you speak? I speak English. That's not my language. I can only speak the language because it is a made up language. It's made by the white man. What type of education do you have? Do you have a black education? You have the white man education. Black people wake up, please. And I don't want you to be singing all these songs that you free at last and you and, you and you, the white men children are going to be walking down the street and singing free at last. Please, please get that ignorance out of your mind. Why do you want your children to walk with the white men children singing free at loss? They've been free all the time. What we need to do is gather the people up. Gather the people up and either we go repatriate back like Marcos Garvey tried to do and go back to Africa. Repatriation. Let's go to the Queen Guest Chamber and get some money for repatriation. Because we have so much abundant land there. Take the wealth from the, this country and go there with it. There's a plan for the white men to destroy you. Do you have a plan for him? No. Because you don't make trains, you don't make planes, dynamites are gone. You don't have no factories to make those stuff. You can't get a license for that stuff. They would not give you a license to have a factory to make guns and dynamite. So how are you going to survive here? You need to try to survive by planting grains so we can have some food to survive. Because when they get ready to send you back there, what are you going to do? Just the way they brought you here, they can take, you, they can take us back there. Now, you must prepare yourself to go back with abundancy of wealth, 
like machinery. Knowledge in the brains. So we can go there and dig out all the gold and the diamonds and the mineral and build up our country. Africa is the richest place in the world. And you are afraid to go back there. And you let the white men moving down. See, they just take, they call it the Middle East. They just take that portion and they're moving all the way down. See, they're coming all the way down. They're going all the way. Zimbabwe, they keep on going. South Africa, they keep on going. Ethiopia, they keep on going. They already have Egypt, Jerusalem, Kuwait, Iraq, Jordan, Morocco, they are, Saudi Arabia, they already have all of that. See, they keep on moving down slowly. So they're going to put you into a corner. They're going to back you up. And guess what? They're going to put you back against the wall. Because all those places that they call the Middle East was for the black men. And they chase them out there. And most of them go to Ethiopia. So keep on not thinking the right way and base your mind upon this book. This is just a book and you can take the leave and you know what you can do with it. And you can, and nothing. You can burn it in the fire. It's not a holy book. It speaks of things that happen and gone in many time gone. And the thing that it speaks about is not that righteous and holy. It speaks about killing. Wife swapping. Sodomy. Come on. Black people, wake up. Let's see if we can get the land and plant grains so we can have food and teach our children to plant grains and stop fooling yourself. You're not fooling anybody. And if, as I said in my program, if you have demons, write me a letter. If you've been possessed. If your house has been haunted and you can't sleep into your house, write me a letter. But you must watch this program. You must listen to me. Black people, if you don't listen to me, you're going to perish. Because none of the preachers are not telling you anything. They just want to live fat. You know, fat Stomach be full with food and expensive wine. So write to me. If you got problem at your home, write me a letter. At the end of the program, you will see information where you can contact me. Many ways that you can contact me. So you write me a letter, I send me an email. Don't afraid to write me a letter. I'm here, and I'm here for my people. You are my people. So be good. As I said to the black people at all times on my program, be good. And be strong. Be strong and multiply and replenish. And don't listen to the white man. Because he's your enemy. They're all not your enemy. Some of them are good. They will do good to you, but they're not good. You get it? Some of them will do good to you, but they're not good. Because they are your enemy. And you know why? Huh. I will tell you on my next program why they're your enemies. And be good to me. Write, be good. Write me a letter. Write me a letter. Be good.